So the story begins like this. I was about 10 seconds away from picking up the Harbor Freight motorcycle lift with its yearly coupon made in a small village called Pittsburgh just outside of Beijing. When I happened to come across this advert for a Kendon folding stand-up motorcycle table lift, the folding stand-up immediately caught my eye because the idea of putting it away when I was done is quite intriguing. If you're like me and you don't have tons of garage space for a lift to take up, it might sound intriguing to you too. You will, however, by comparison, pay three times as much for this feature. There didn't seem to be any major negative reviews, and the problems that were called out were repaired in what they refer to as the 2019 revision. All models now sold are 2019 revision, and this one is also 2019. Ken didn't stand up, unbox, demo, and evaluate video. Let's get started. We're going to get right into the unboxing and assembly and talk about the features and enhancements as we come across them. As you can see, it's delivered freight, strapped a wooden crate on a pallet, nailed as well as secured with metal straps for shipment. As we pull off the top, we can see that everything is wrapped in bubble wrap. Though the items are not secured into the crate, it definitely needs to be shipped this side up to stop the movement of parts during shipment. First thing we've recovered from the crate is the manual. As we pull it out, I don't know, for $1,000, I think they could have dropped a staple in the printed out copy of the PDF that they provided me. Maybe I'm just nitpicking. After the manual, we started to remove all the readily accessible items that were wrapped up in bubble wrap, putting everything off to the side for inventory. Among those items was bolt clips and pins found in a Ziploc bag. In accordance with the uncrating instructions, the sides are hammered back like shown. And I'll leave this right here for a moment as I unwrap the small pieces. The uncrating instructions points to another piece, which I find to be under the unit, so I'm going to have to lift the unit up on its side a bit in order to free that piece. I find two pieces under here. This piece right here is referred to as the rear rail section part 15, and this piece is the loading ram. I line up the rear rail section like so. Once lined up, I use the uh, rear rail detent rings, half inch, part 17 on the inventory list to lock this part into place. Swing it shut just like that. A rubber tie down keeps us affixed in the closed position. The front wheel loop brackets are affixed with the 916 hex bolt and washers, initially offering some resistance due to the paint over the threads. All the brackets up front allow for adjustment, so I'm keeping everything up front loose until all the pieces are fully assembled. We're going to install the guide rails now. The manual actually calls out a hex bolt for this fitting, but it's actually a D10 pin. The manual must not have been updated. This must be a running change. The bottom of each bracket, however, will be loosely fitted with a 916 hex bolt. We're going to be installing the wheel chalk now. We don't know what actual size is going to be. It varies depending on the motorcycle. So I'm just going to put it in one of the positions. I'm going to remove this pin. Just place it right in. Then we're just going to lock it right back down into place. And that's it. We have four detent ring pins left to use to install the wheel loop. We're going to install this now. I first remove the cotta pins from the ring pins. It's simply a matter of lining up the loop and dropping the pins in. It doesn't matter which direction you place the loop on. And then we'll just secure all four of them with the cotta pins. All the parts are now assembled. I'm going to lay down the unit on the floor so we can tighten everything down now. Situated on the floor, I can now dress from the bottom rails. Make sure everything is even. Tighten everything down now. And I'll also align these top brackets as I tighten them down as well. Also have something to grab onto to bring this into the final position when it's on the floor. And this front area, there's a flat spot and a round spot. As I remove this cable tie right here, there are a couple of cable ties. I point to the flat spot, which is now pointed down. And everything's in position. It's where I want it to be. And this is where we're going to continue the work. Although I do want to make sure that the handle for the manual pump has enough clearance. So I'm going to just put that in right now. And I can see as I move the pump back and forth, there's enough room. So we'll release the rubber fastener. Then we'll pivot the rear section of the lift downward to the floor. Give a quick cleaning to all horizontal surfaces that may have oil or debris or cosmoline or whatever from shipping. Just want to get that out of the way now. 
Obviously, we're going to test the functionality of this lift before we put a bike on it. I'm going to close this valve. I'll tell you, this design does not have a very tactile feel, so don't close it too tight. So I started jacking it up for the initial test, and everything was working fine. But one of the things that I had started to notice as it was going up, as you'll see here, is because of the way the jack is designed, is that if it's close to the wall, we immediately run out of room. And it's because it starts to push forward a little bit as it comes up. So it's not a big deal. It's just something to keep in mind as it rolls forward on this track. You're going to want to make sure that you have several inches of space away from the wall. So here's an example of the jack going up. And you can see that as it goes up, the lift is actually going forward a bit, you know, by design. There's nothing wrong with this, but just keep in mind, keep it a bit off the wall. Another thing I noticed, I would have thought there would have been a weak spring that would have been pulling in the safety bar as the lift was raised, pulling the safety bar automatically into the next gate as the jack went up, and then allowing you to lock it all the way up when you were dropping the jack down. It didn't come with that, but I just wanted to point out that observation. This particular functionality was called out in the 2019 redesign, and it does in fact automatically lock into the first or second gate but it doesn't lock into any other gates thereafter. So I have to manually hold the bar into the top gate while turning the hydraulic release to lower the jack, locking it into safety. About a minute later in this video, I'm gonna find the retractable handle on this bar. I found that I had to tighten this handle because especially on release, we could see that it would just spin right off even if I was very careful when tightening the uh, hydraulic for the lifting of the lift. We're going to lower the lift now and try raising it with the pneumatic pump. It did not come with the same size fitting as my other pneumatic air tools, so I'm going to have to go and change out the fitting on this. The one it came with is held in with 9 sixteenths. I tighten in my fitting with some PTFE, some male-to-male -male adapter, brass fitting, followed by more Teflon tape on the other threads, and I put my new adapter on, tighten everything down. We should be good to go. We'll continue with our test. It's possible that the fittings you use for your pneumatic tools will vary from mine. You might not need to make this modification. Okay, showtime. Still need to come around the front and lock the safety bar into place. I'll point out that I did find this handle, which means that you do not have to get under there. The handle will fall out if you pull it too far, but it means you can pull that handle out. You can pull the safety bar in whatever position you need to without having to get under the jack, which is definitely a lot safer. You can see me doing that now and lowering the jack into position. So yeah, that's definitely a plus. I didn't see that before. Now I just push it right back in. Okay, I think we're ready for a motorcycle. Let's drop it down. This is Puddles, my AMF lowrider. Puddles just got a restoration on the transmission and engine. If you want to watch those videos in that series, click up there. Otherwise, Puddles is now going to demonstrate the operations of this lift. I've already secured straps onto the handlebars. I just have to be mindful of some oil lines hanging off the bottom. Be sure to first flip the wheel lock into the load position. Making sure the kickstand's up, I'll walk the bike straight up the ramp all the way to the wheel lock till the wheel lock snaps in the other direction holding the front wheel into the closed position and start securing the straps to the eyelids if you're not comfortable doing this by yourself be sure to have somebody supporting the bike these are the only types of straps that should be used for this job not rope not bungee cord just small ratchet straps just like this progressively tightening both sides till you get a very slight compression of the front suspension and with that i took off the loading ramp Let's raise them up, we're ready to go. It was effortless to raise it, and I found that it took just over 100 pumps to get just past the threshold of that top lock to be able to lower it down over. No problem at all. Though if I was raising this and lowering this 20 times a day, I would probably opt for the pneumatic option. 
Locked into place and we're secure, ready to work. Motorcycles lifted. I can now stow the lever for the pump as I don't need to get any in the way. There's also eyelets on the back if you want to secure your bike from the rear as well. It would be conceivable to jack up the frame right over here and in doing so, raising the bike, you could in fact pull the pins that are on this rear portion of the frame and you'd be able to remove this piece if you wanted to either remove the rear tire and work on that section of the bike or if in fact you just wanted to make this area smaller reducing it by about a foot hanging off of here the motorcycle on the jack would take up as much space as the motorcycle itself we'll now show as we're done with the project we're going to bring the motorcycle down and we're going to stow the jack away in the corner so i put the manual handle in so i'll be able to lift the jack up high enough over the safety latch having made sure the valve was closed Then we'll move it out of the way, so we'll be able to lower the jack. We'll turn the knob. Have it come back down all the way to the floor. Comes down nice and slow. A little faster towards the bottom, but that's fine. Set our ramp down. Back up front, I'm going to be removing my nylon straps now. If you're not comfortable with doing this, if you don't feel the bike is going to stand up by itself, have a second person support the bike obviously you don't want the bike falling off the lift with the second strap removed we pull the wheel right out of the lock and the bike right off the lift no problem at all we then remove the loading ramp and then we stow it. Then we remove the pump lever. And stow that with the ramp. Fold the rear portion back in on the lift. Secure it with the rubber strap. Make sure our air hose fitting is safely out of the way. Then we lift it straight up into the air. Standing vertical. And roll it up right up against the wall. We plan to store it is the area that I'm going to use. We'll take a look at some measurements. First, here's the profile, the jack up against the wall with nothing around it. As we can see, it doesn't take up any space. Furthermore, the pins could be removed, allowing the loop to swing down and then putting the pins back in. For the next example, I've included a couple of items around the jack for comparison purposes. We can see a 10 quart bucket, a vacuum cleaner, the jack, and just a small step ladder and we can see that the jack hardly sticks out and while the jack is stable in the vertical position it is possible to grab the jack and pull it over for an extra insurance policy i'm going to put some straps into the wall with toggle bolts on both sides so i'm going to set the position of both of those straps drill a hole in the wall and i got these special toggle bolts that i like to use for cinder block And the mount is plastic that I'm knocking in, but the actual toggle bolt is metal. It holds about 350 pounds each once it's screwed in. And I clip off the plastic inserts once it's in. And I'll drop the screw and washer through the nylon strap. Then I'll affix the top portion of the strap into the wall. We'll secure this tightly. Both straps are in. We'll bring in the lift to set up the other half now. And here we have the lift installed. I've got an oil that I've been heating with propane in an area that I've marked. So it's making a hole in that location and securing the threads at the same time. Here's the resulting hole. So now I just lock the clip through and now the lift is secured to the side of the wall. Then repeat it on the other side, doubling the layer of protection. And for accidental jarring, not deliberate attempts to rip it off the wall and throw it. At the end of the day, I'm very satisfied with this lift. I think there are other lifts for the same price that do not have this very important feature of being able to fold away. That's very important to me, especially with limited space. Uh, beyond that one feature, I still think it's a quality lift. 
I feel confident that when I put my bike on it, nothing's going to go wrong. There were a couple of quirks, a couple of things that, you know, needed some attention that I didn't think were deal breakers. I was able to fix on the spot that I had mentioned. I found that the valve was a little bit uh, squirrely for opening and closing. It wasn't very tactile. A couple things needed some sprucing up a little, painting a, a couple of rust spots in the weld areas. I feel as though I might make some sort of modification with that safety bar when lowering the jack personally so it would be held up when the jack is coming down. You don't have to be holding it with your hand. That's just my personal preference. Uh, it would have been nice if they had some sort of spring which was able to hold that bar and lock it into all of the gates as the motorcycle was going up, just not the first or second gate. Again, not a deal breaker, but I'm pointing these out as part of the review. I also think that side adjustments on the front wheel chalk would have been awesome for this. Would have made the bike more stable when loading this onto a ramp. Definitely made it a one-person job for people with bigger bikes. But that's what I got. A definite win. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. i uh, give you some ideas about putting a motorcycle lift in your garage. Hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Hit that subscribe button for more videos. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?